Welcome to this lesson on understanding international accounting standards. An accounting standard is a common set of principles, standards and procedures that define the basis of financial accounting policies and practices. Accounting standards improve the transparency of financial reporting in all countries. In this unit, we will look briefly at the following accounting standards, the GAAP standards, the IFRS standards, and Indian accounting standards. In the United States, the generally accepted accounting principles form the set of accounting standards widely accepted for preparing financial statements. International companies follow the international financial reporting standards, which are set by the International Accounting Standards Board and serve as a guideline for non U.S. GAAP companies reporting financial statements. When preparing financial statements using GAAP, most American corporations and other business entities use the many rules of how to report business transactions based upon the various GAAP rules. This provides for consistency in the reporting of companies and businesses so that financial analysts, banks, shareholders and the Securities and Exchange Commission can have all reporting companies preparing their financial statements using the same rules and reporting procedures. GAAP is slowly being phased out in favor of the International Financial Reporting Standards, the IFRS, as global business becomes more pervasive. GAAP applies only to United States financial reporting, and that an American company reporting under GAAP might show different results if it was compared to a British company that uses the international standards. While there is close similarity between GAAP and the international rules, the differences can lead a financial statement user to believe incorrectly that company A made more money than company B simply because they report using different rules. The move towards international standards seeks to eliminate this kind of disparity. Note, generally accepted accounting practice in the UK or UK GAAP is the overall body of regulation establishing how company accounts must be prepared in the United Kingdom. This includes not only accounting standards but also UK company law. The Indian Accounting Standard is the accounting standard adopted by companies in India and issued under the supervision of the Accounting Standards Board, which was constituted in 1977. The RSB is a committee under the Institute of Chartered Accountants of India, the ICOI, which consists of representatives from government departments, academics, and other professional bodies. The Indian Accounting Standards are named and numbered in the same way as the International Financial Reporting Standards, the IFRS. India followed accounting standards from the Indian Generally Acceptable Accounting Principle IGAP, prior to adoption of the Indian Accounting Standards. GAAP is meant to ensure a minimum level of consistency in a company's financial statements, which makes it easier for investors to analyze and extract useful information. GAAP also facilitates the cross-comparison of financial information across different companies. These 10 general principles can help you remember the main mission and direction of the GAAP system. The first three GAAP principles are the principle of regularity, which means that the accountant has adhered to GAAP rules and regulations as a standard. Next, the principle of consistency, where professionals commit to applying the same standards throughout the reporting process to prevent errors or discrepancies. Here, accountants are expected to fully disclose and explain the reasons behind any changed or updated standards. And three, the principle of sincerity, in which the accountant strives to provide an accurate depiction of a company's financial situation. The next principle is the principle of permanence of methods. This refers to the procedures used in financial reporting should be consistent. The principle of non-compensation requires that both negatives and positives should be fully reported with transparency and without the expectation of debt compensation. The next is the principle of prudence, emphasizing fact-based financial data representation that is not clouded by speculation. Next, we have the principle of continuity. While valuing assets, it should be assumed the business will continue to operate. And the next one is principle of periodicity, which requires entries should be distributed across the appropriate periods of time. For example, Revenue should be divided by its relevant periods. The next principle is the principle of materiality or good faith. Here accountants must strive for full disclosure in financial reports. And finally, 
we have the principle of utmost good faith. This presupposes that parties remain honest in transactions. GAAP must be followed when a company distributes its financial statements outside of the company. If a corporation's stock is publicly traded, the financial statements must also adhere to rules established by the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission. GAAP covers such things as revenue recognition, balance sheet item classification, and outstanding share measurements. If a financial statement is not prepared using GAAP, investors should be cautious. Also, some companies may use both GAAP and non-GAAP compliant measures when reporting financial results. GAAP regulations require that non-GAAP measures are identified in financial statements and other public disclosures, such as press releases. The International Financial Reporting Standards are a set of international accounting standards stating how particular types of transactions and other events should be reported in financial statements. The IFRS are issued by the International Accounting Standards Board, and they specify exactly how accountants must maintain and report their accounts. The IFRS were established in order to have a common accounting language, so business and accounts can be understood from company to company and country to country. The IFRS covers a wide range of accounting activities. There are certain aspects of business practice for which IFRS set mandatory rules. These include the statement of financial position. This is also known as a balance sheet. The IFRS influences the ways in which the components of a balance sheet are reported. The statement of comprehensive income. This can take the form of one statement, or it can be separated into a profit and loss statement and a statement of other income, including property and equipment. The statement of changes in equity. Also known as a statement of retained earnings, this documents the company's change in earnings or profit for the given financial period. The statement of cash flow, this report summarizes the company's financial transactions in the given period, separating cash flow into operations, investing, and financing. In addition to these basic reports, a company must also give a summary of its accounting policies. The IFRS originated in the European Union with the intention of making business affairs and accounts accessible across the continent. Although only a portion of the world uses IFRS, participating countries are spread all over the world, rather than being confined to one geographic region. The United States has not yet adopted IFRS, as the gap is viewed as the gold standard. Currently, about 120 countries use IFRS in some way, and 90 of those require them to fully conform to IFRS regulations. The official IFRS website has more information on the rules and history of the IFRS. Some differences that still exist between both accounting rules include LIFO inventory. While GAAP allows companies to use the last in first out as an inventory cost method, it is prohibited under IFRS. Costs of development. These costs are to be charged to expenses they are incurred under GAAP. Under IFRS, the costs can be capitalized and amortized over multiple periods. Write-downs, GAAP specifies that the amount of write-down of an inventory or fixed asset cannot be reversed if the market value of the asset subsequently increases. The write-down can be reversed under IFRS. Finally, we look at Sarbanes-Oxley. The Sarbanes-Oxley Act of 2002, often shortened to SOX, is legislation enacted in response to the high-profile Enron and Worldcom financial scandals to protect shareholders and the general public from accounting errors and fraudulent practices in the enterprise. The Act is administered by the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission, which sets deadlines for compliance and publishes rules on requirements. Sarbanes-Oxley is not a set of business practices and does not specify how a business should store records. Rather, it defines which records are to be stored and for how long. The consequences for non-compliance are fines, imprisonment, or both. IT departments are increasingly faced with the challenge of creating and maintaining a corporate records archive in a cost-effective fashion that satisfies the requirements put forth by the legislation. Although these laws have their origin in the United States, because of the overall influence and internationalization of financial transactions, banking and investment, Sarbanes-Oxley is applied internationally. Accounting standards differ between countries, and these differences can be significant. However, there is growing alignment of standards internationally, 
Undergap and the IFRS gap is a set of standards originating in the US, but also understood and applied in some form or other worldwide. Gap standards are being gradually replaced by the IFRS. India has embraced the IFRS with the Indian accounting standards. As a manager, it is useful to learn about the basics of accounting standards as you progress through your career in management. Subscribe now and join us in your career journey. Many thanks for watching this lesson. Want to learn more? Click on our website to view our range of courses on financial management.